All right, welcome. We're going to talk about uh, an intuitive definition of the limit today and do some examples. All right, so here is the intuitive definition. So definition, we say the limit as x goes to a of f of x is l if the following, that uh, f of x is or gets arbitrarily close to L for all x sufficiently close to A. Okay? So, you should think of it this way As your x is zooming in to a, getting closer and closer to a, to say the limit of f is l means that f of x is getting closer and closer to l. Okay? All right. So let's do a couple examples where we can see this in action. The first one is this. Let's figure out the limit as x goes to 3 of 2x. Well, you should be thinking to yourself of this procedure. As x is zipping along to 3, then what is 2x getting close to? Well, if x is getting closer to 3, this whole thing is getting closer to 2 times 3. In other words, 6. All right. Here's another example. Let's do the limit as x goes to 4 of 2x plus 1. Well, so you again think of this process. x is heading in, getting closer and closer to 4. What does everything else, therefore, have to get close to? Well, if x is getting close to 4, 2x is getting close to 2 times 4, and the 1 is, well, already at 1. So the answer is 9. Okay. Now, in this case, I could just plug in the limit. You know, x went to 3, I changed x to 3. x went to 4, I changed x to 4. And sometimes you can do that. It's really a function of what are called continuous functions later on. But for now, I want you to see some examples where you can't always just plug in. So let's look at the limit at x equals to 0 of x squared plus x all over x. Here, I can't just plug in 0 because I'd have division by zero, which is an undefined uh, thing in mathematics. So we need another idea. And in this case, the other idea is to kind of simplify stuff and see if things you know, come into focus better. And you notice I can divide both terms in the numerator by x. If I do that, I just get an x plus 1. All right, now this one is easy to see because as x is going to zero, Obviously, x plus 1 is getting closer and closer to 0 plus 1. So the answer is 1. Okay? So sometimes simplifying things will uh, kind of let you see what's going on. In general, though, there's no one procedure that always works, but there are a lot of common tricks. Here is another trick. Suppose x is heading to 9. The limit as x goes to 9 of x minus 9 all over the square root of x minus 3. All right. Again, I can't plug in 9 because then in the denominator I would get 0, which is undefined. So I'm going to have to do some sort of trick. And the trick that's useful here is uh, multiplying everything by the algebraic conjugate. So in other words, I want to multiply the top and the bottom by square root of x plus 3, square root of x plus 3. So you saw this trick a lot when you worked with square roots and wanted to put them in different forms. Anyway, this trick will actually work here. So the denominator here, you know, you have a minus b times a plus b is a squared minus b squared. So I get square root of x squared, so that's x minus 3 squared, which is 9. 
And on the top, I'm not going to multiply it out because I can see it's uh, one of those terms will cancel. So the x minus 9's cancel. And I'm left with the limit as x goes to 0 of the square root of x, oops, plus 3. Except everywhere it was going to 9. All right, square root of x plus 3. Well, if the x is converging to 9, then the square root of x is converging to square root of 9, and then the 3 is just hanging out at 3, so it's 3 plus 3, which is 6. All right, so that was a more complicated one. We couldn't see the answer at first, but we did some tricks, and eventually, uh, you know, the answer became apparent. All right, ciao.